once again, Wednesday, we have our uh, Lenten soup supper at 5.30, and also uh, the, the worship service uh, at 6.45, and this week's uh, topic is the golden altar of incense from Exodus chapter 30. So uh, come and, and hear that and uh, take part in the worship service. Also, um, beginning next Sunday, the 2nd of April, uh, Good Shepherd is in charge of the nursing home services at Cocado Manor. And so uh, we do need some more people to sign up to help with that. Um, and there is a sign-up sheet out on the uh, bulletin board out there. And also, um, you could also talk to Glenn if you have any questions as well. I, as far as I know, we only ha- Glenn, did you look? We have four signed up? Four signed up. I think we're good on the schedule. We are good now. Yeah. Oh, Good, never mind then. <laughs> All right. Um, David, you had an announcement, right? Yes. Okay. Morning. Uh, someone was mentioning uh, a desire to go to the Newsboys concert in St. Cloud on Saturday, I think it was April 22nd. And um, so, if you'd like to go to that, we have a sign-up sheet out on the bulletin board in the fellowship hall there you can sign up for. Um, to, for the tickets cost $25. If you want, an 18, 18, if you want $18 tickets, uh, we have to buy them in a group of eight. And so if you want to do that, let me know by Wednesday, because we got to jump on it because there's less than 600 tickets left. So hopefully there will still be some left Wednesday. That's what I'm I'm saying. So if you want to go to that, and it's open to everyone, youth, young, adult, or everyone else, and everyone else includes you. So So if you want to go to that Newsboys concert, want to get discounted tickets, let me know by Wednesday, and hopefully tickets will still be available. I'll be able to buy a block of tickets for that. Otherwise, Supplies may run out, and after that, they'll, you'll probably have to buy on your own. It'll be $25. So by the 29th, make sure to, to let me know or sign up on the bulletin board. Um, also, youth, for our service project, um, we're trying to get $75, and we'll, we're going to raise that by this Wednesday. So youth, just letting you know that for our service project, Seventy-five dollars uh, by Wednesday. Just, just a reminder. So, thank you. All right. One other announcement: um, the choir has been asked to uh, reunite to sing on Easter Sunday, and so they will be practicing two songs that have been uh, sung before, so they should be familiar. And so uh, they are inviting all former choir members and/or fast learners to practice to practice after the Lenten worship services each Wednesday um, that we have left here. Uh, so, uh, take note of that. Uh, and uh, if, you, if you have any questions, uh, see Deb uh, Olson. I think that's all I'm gonna, going to mention today. At this time, let's stand for our opening hymn, number 319.
You may be seated. All right. Um, For prayer requests this morning, uh, continue to pray for Rod Marquart and for Pat as well. Um, Each each week that I visit them, he gets weaker and weaker. Uh, I visited them on Friday, and um, he's pretty much unresponsive right now, sleeping all the time. Uh, So continue to pray for Pat, especially uh, for strength during this time. Also, uh, praise... Uh, it, you, maybe you've already talked to jo- Don this morning. He has his voice back. Just <laughs> So Don will be preaching next week. <laughs> um, so we praise God with you, Don. Um, there was something else you mentioned. Oh, Julie Marquardt is having surgery on Tuesday. Uh, so we'll pray for Julie. And was there something else that you mentioned? Oh, yeah. Uh, Brita and Howard had a new grandchild, but are they here? I can't see them. So I don't know if it was a, was it a boy or a girl. Name, I don't know. Aaliyah? Aaliyah? All right, Aaliyah. And so we'll pray for, for her. Yes, Kenny. I want to pray for some of the people who have no job. All right. We'll pray for those who are uh, struggling without jobs. Yeah. All right. I got one. Yes. Could you pray, say a prayer for all the hungry people in the room? Definitely. We'll pray for those who are, are hungry. And those who don't have jobs. Yes, Deb. All right. Praise that the entire Edwards family is here today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then there's a mission team from the Bible school leaving for Ecuador on Saturday. And so pray for their travel and their ministry there. All right. Uh, a team from the Bible school uh, is leaving for Ecuador on what day? Tuesday? Saturday. 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 All right. Um, So pray for their travel, and, and how long will they be there? Or? Don't know. Okay. Anything else we can pray for? Yes, Dean. Continue to pray for Eileen, uh, Dean's mom. Uh, you said she's still in Buff- at Buffalo. She's in Buffalo. Okay. So just uh, still under, still um, just dealing with those effects from the strokes and and uh, physically weak and all that. So pray for Eileen and for uh, the family. Tony. Where at? In the country of Jordan. Jordan, okay. Um, pray for um, Matt and Rosie, you said? Okay. Pray for Matt and Rosie uh, as they are now in um, Jordan, the country of Jordan. All right. Missions work or? Okay. 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 All right. Anything else to add? Yes. Pray for all caregivers. Yes. In general. They really need help. Yep. Yep. Pray for all the, the caregivers dealing, uh, caring for those who are uh, sick or sick on the like undeath. Yep. We Definitely. Oh yeah. Yep. And I would yes encourage you to. Uh, to, to, to even if it's just a call to Pat, you know, 
so all the care, uh, pray for all the caregivers, those caring for those who are um, sick or, or on death's door. Anything else? Yes. So pray, praise God that he answers our prayers and that he... Uh, uh, All right. Anything else? Yes, Jason. All right, pray for Noah. He's uh, sick at the moment and has a busy week and also play coming up uh, in the next week, so pray for him. Anything else we can add? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. (coughs) Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, the blessing that it is to come before you to... um, share our prayer requests with one another, Lord, but to come to you, Lord, because you are the one that can do something about them. Lord, you can give us wisdom. You can, uh, Lord, just answer prayer like you did in, in, in Don's case. Lord, and we praise you that his voice is back. And Lord, that um, he, he's, he's feeling good about that, Lord, and he gives all the credit to you, Lord, as we should. And Lord, uh, we thank you for, for doing that. The, the fact that you answer prayer, Lord, when we come to you, Lord, and that you call us, Lord, you invite us to come to you because you are a good God and that you want us to uh, call upon your name in that way. Lord, it's, it's prayer is the, the language of faith, Lord. And, and uh, when we come to you, Lord, it's as if, uh, just as if a, a child is going to their father, Lord. And we, we thank you that you listen to us and you promise us much. Lord, uh, we thank you that uh, my family is um, apparently uh, feeling much better today. Uh, that uh, everybody's here for the first time in uh, a long time. And Lord, we, pray f- we, we just praise you that you are um, healing, Lord, and, and, and you're with us during these times of sicknesses, Lord. We also praise you for the birth of Aaliyah, a uh, new granddaughter for uh, Brita and Howard. And we just pray that you would bless her and protect her, bless, bless the family too as they get to know this new little one, and, and uh, bless Brita and Howard as well. And Lord, we think of uh, the Bible school team going to Ecuador uh, later at the end of the week. We pray that you would protect them as they travel and that uh, you would give them a fruitful time there, Lord, where they can minister to people, Lord, and, and impact them too, Lord, uh, for, for your sake, Lord, that maybe even some of them would consider mission work in the future. Lord, that uh, these trips aren't just for fun, Lord, but uh, they, they are to accomplish your goals, Lord. Lord, we continue to pray for uh, Rod and Pat during this time as, as Rod gets weaker, Lord, and as he um, is, is unresponsive now, Lord. It's, it's uh, visibly hard on Pat, um, both the, the sleepless hours that she has, um, awake at night sometimes, and, and just overall trying to, to care for, for, Pat, or for Rod and, and, and making him uh, comfortable, Lord. And we just pray that you would give her strength and comfort during this time. Help us to know where we can uh, help out, Lord. And Lord, we pray for all caregivers out there, those caring for the uh, loved ones that are uh, ill or are struggling with some kind of a disease or um, are, are close to death, Lord. We pray that you would help them, Lord. Help them to lean on you, Lord, to take their strength from your word and from um, the friends and family that they have. And Lord, we pray for uh, Noah as well, who is sick and um, has a, quite a busy week and, and also a play coming up, Lord. We pray that you would um, help him to feel better before then, that he would be able to uh, just not only rest, Lord, during this busy time so he can get healthy, but also um, just bless him as he is able to take part in the play uh, as well. Lord, we pray for Julie and the surgery that she'll be having this week. Be with her, be with the, uh, the doctors as they uh, do the surgery, and just help her to uh, recover 
uh, quickly and, and uh, um, as well as having a, a busy home uh, as well, too. We pray for Eileen, that you would continue to give her um, rest, Lord, as she and deals with this um, uh, the, the after effects of the strokes, Lord, and, and just the weakness and, and all the other things going on, Lord. We pray that you would comfort her, Lord. Let her know that you were very near to her and give strength to the family too, Lord, as they minister to, to her. We also pray for uh, all those who are uh, struggling, Lord, maybe with uh, finding a job or, or those who are hungry, Lord, we think especially in our community, Lord, but also uh, in much... Uh, wider area too, Lord. We think of those in the cities and, and elsewhere, Lord. That you would uh, use people, use your children to come alongside them and to help them get back on, get back on their feet. And um, Lord, that they might come to know uh, that you are their provider as well. Lord, we also pray for Matt and Rosie as they uh, have traveled now to, to Jordan. Lord, we pray that you would bless them as they are there, protect them, and Lord, uh, give them uh, a fruitful time there where they can uh, do what they need to do uh, and, and get uh, everything accomplished that needs to be accomplished, Lord. Lord, we pray your blessing upon this day, Lord, on this service. Uh, we pray your blessing upon Mark as he brings the word uh, this morning. In your name I pray. Amen. At this time, would you please stand as we call upon... Dean Jennison to read scripture. Good morning. <clears throat> Our first reading is from Isaiah 42, verses 14 to 21. It's Isaiah 42, verses 14 to 21. For a long time I have kept silent. I have been quiet and held myself back, but now, like a woman in childbirth, I cry out, I gasp and pant. I will lay waste the mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn rivers into islands and dry up the pools. I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make, them, make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. But those who trust in idols, who say to images, you are our gods, will be turned back in utter shame. Israel blind and deaf. Hear you, deaf, look you blind and see. Who is blind but my servant, and deaf like the messenger I send? Who is blind like the one covenant with me, one in covenant with me, blind like the servant of the Lord? You have seen many things, but you pay no attention. Your ears are open, but you do not listen. It pleased the Lord for the sake of his righteous to make this, his law great and glorious. The gospel lesson is from John 9, verses 1 through 41. So we're going to be on our feet for a while. All right. <clears throat> Jesus heals the man who was born blind. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? that he was born blind. Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground and made some mud with saliva and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed he wa that he was. Others said, No, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then are your eyes open? they asked. He replied, The man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Shalom and wash. So I went there and washed, and then I could see. Where is this man, they asked him. I don't know, he said. Religious leaders questioned the blind man. They brought, they brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore the Pharisees asked him how he had received his sight. 
He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others asked, How can a sinner perform such signs? So they were divided. Then they turned again in the blind, to the blind man, What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, He is a prophet. They still did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son, they asked. Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it now that he can see? We know he is our son, the parents asked him, and we know he was born blind. But how he can see now, or who opened his eyes, we do not know. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders who had already decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. That is why the parents said, he is of age, ask him. A second time they summoned the man who was blind. Give glory to God by telling the truth, they said. We know this man is a sinner. He replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I do know, I was blind and now I see. Then they asked, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I have told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? Then they hurled insults at him and said, You are the fellow's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. The man answered, "How? Now that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. To this they replied, you were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Jesus teaches about spiritual blindness. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, and, then, and he, when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I might believe in him. Jesus said, You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one who is speaking to you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into the world, so the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were, who were with him heard him say this and asked, What? Are we blind too? Jesus said, If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin, but now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. Here ends the readings. Please remain standing as we confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we'll call upon the ushers to receive our tithes and offering. Let's pray. Lord, you are the giver of all good things. And Lord, you provide so much for us, both physically and spiritually. And we pray now, Lord, that we would give back to you out of what you have given us, Lord, a portion that you might bless for your good, that your name might be spread among the nations. Your name might be prayed. Amen.
Now I'm good. Jason says good. Okay, so. <laughs> the uh, lesson is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 7 through 14. Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 7 through 14. Therefore, do not become partakers with them, for you are, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these words. We thank you for your presence here. Help us to focus on your message to us this day. May your Holy Spirit work in our hearts and minds, clearing it of the things that clutter it, the darkness that encompasses us sometimes during the days and the weeks, and may we see your light shining clearly through. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Far off in the dark night, the ship's captain spotted a light. Right away, he ordered his signal man to send this message. Alter your course 10 degrees south. Promptly, a return message was received. Alter your course 10 degrees north. The captain was angered. He commanded another message be sent because he was perturbed that his was ignored. So he sent a second message, alter your course 10 degrees south, I am the captain. Soon another message was received, alter your course 10 degrees north, I am seaman third class Jones. Immediately the captain sent a third message, knowing the fear that it would evoke. Alter your course 10 degrees south. I am a battleship. The reply came. Alter your course 10 degrees north. I am a lighthouse. So do you think the captain made a change in his course? <laughs> I think he did. But more than the course change, his perspective changed. The light that he first thought was a threat to his vessel was actually his salvation. It warned of treacherous rocks ahead and pointed the captain and his crew to safe harbors. God's light is like that. We, we tend to shrink back sometimes when it hits us in fear, but with the Spirit's help, we come to see that light as our saving grace. And in this passage in Ephesians, we should see that light and those benefits too. But let, let's say, consider a f two things about light. And there is an outline in your um, bulletin if you want to open that. And there's two things I didn't write in there. It's in the blue section. The first purpose of light, spiritually speaking, is to dispel darkness. John 8, 12 says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Am I okay or something? Or
Next week, we'll talk about sound. Today, we're talking about light, though. Okay? And Don will be talking about that when he's... Okay, John 8, 12. I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of men, the light of life. When we stumble around in the darkness, it's like being dropped into a deep cave. I don't know, how many of you ever been to a cave or a mine where they bring you in and they shut off all the lights? Okay? You've had that experience then, where you go, oh, wow, I've never been in anything this dark. You don't know if you're going to peril off a ledge or even find your way out again. But what does the guide finally do? He turns on a light. And you know, this doesn't mean much in here. <laughs> but when it's pitch black, this becomes a light that dispels all the darkness and takes away your fear and gives you hope <laughs> that there is a way out of this place that you paid money to go see. <clears throat> <laughs> Second, light attracts attention. Just like if I were to take this and strike a match and a candle in a dark room, all the attention goes to this candle. Just as God's light serves as a beacon for hope, for those seeking peace, those seeking rest, those seeking forgiveness. So those are the two purposes of light. One is to dispel darkness. One is to attract attention. Remember one point. Light does not attack. Light drives out the darkness. The last important point before we get to Ephesians 5 is that the light does not originate with us. The light comes from it one source, and there is only one source that can sustain it, and use it for good, and that is God. God is light. The light shines through us, but the origin is always in God alone. We are merely a light and displaying it to the world around us. So let's go to chapter 5 in Ephesians, but I want you to go up to verse 1. Start with that. It says, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Christians are objects of God's love, and their lives are to express this new life. Thinking of Galatians chapter 5, where you have the fruits of the Spirit. In verse 3 and 4, it says, But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. But let there be no filthiness or foolish talk or crude joking, which are out of place. But instead, let there be thanksgiving. In these verses, it points out there was a contention that the Gentile Christians just might continue to live their old lives not the transformed lives that they had under the blood of Jesus, living in a planned and purposeful, sinful way, and not living in the forgiveness. Paul is making the message very clear. I don't even want that mentioned of you, not even a hint of that, even if some of you aren't doing it. In verse 7 now, we come and it says, Therefore, do not become partakers with them. Do not get involved with evildoers. It is inconsistent to be the objects of God's love and to partner with those who are objects of God's wrath. In verse 5 it said, For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral, impure, who is covetous, that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom. And in verse 6, let no one deceive you with empty words. In other words, don't let people tell you it's not really a sin. It's okay. It's kind of the new normal. Things are happening around. You just got to catch up with the times. He's saying don't let those words deceive you. For because these things are happening, the wrath of God comes upon those sons of disobedience. Engaging in false worship. The 
Ephesians had one of the seven wonders of the world, Artemis. She was a fertility god uh, in a temple that had 127 pillars that were decorated with gold and silver and jewels and paintings and everything. And people would come from all over the world to be part of this. But it also had not only the connotation of a goddess of fertility, but there was prostitution involved with the worship services and all the immoral acts that were just written about here by Paul. It just doesn't make sense to be part of the light and then to be in that darkness. Because Christ leads us to a land of light and hope and love. Verse 8, For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Christians are changed persons. He's declared us righteous in his blood. And that allows us to cross over from the old country, the old nature, the old self, the old flesh, to a new heavenly land that is of a new creation, the new present, the new future, the new spirit. We're no longer part of the darkness, but have been rescued. If I, I have a book that I love, and every, some of you might know, it's Romans, so I want you to just kind of go back and try, find chapter 13. Romans is like the Christian doctrine treaties. It's everything you ever wanted to know. And some, like Luther, have called it the fifth gospel. In chapter 13, verse 12, toward the end of that chapter, it says, The night is far gone. The day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of what? Light! Light, let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make no provision. Don't plan. Don't purposefully go after the flesh to gratify your desires. Okay, going back to our Ephesians passage. Verse 6, I said, had uh, mentioned about letting no one deceive you with empty words because those things will bring on the wrath of God. We used to be siblings of the sons of disobedience. We used to be rebels. We used to be dead. If you go back to Ephesians chapter 2, we won't today, but you'll see you were dead. You were sinful in your trespass. There was no life within you. But in, later in that same chapter, it says, but God. But God made you alive. But God saved you. But God raised you from the dead. You have a new father. You have a new relationship. You have a new citizenship. You have a new life. Entirely filled with the gospel message of the Christ who saved you. And then the second part of that verse 8, it says, Walk as children of light. You know, there is no halfway between darkness and light. Either you are in the dark or you're in the light. It's not also not to be viewed as dualistic kind of battle between the good and the dark side like in uh, Star Wars type thing. Light triumphs over and dispels darkness. We talked about in verse 8 later, or 9, I'm sorry, for the fruit of the light. But I want to talk about just a little bit the fruit of darkness. If we go to Galatians 5, and don't go there right now, but it also, <laughs> just write it on, the, on your notes, the fruit of darkness is evil, wickedness, and falsehood. If you go to Galatians 5, it lists those things. It says, now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, and it lists goes on and on and on that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's a warning. For all of us. But now, those of the Ephesians who were also in darkness and our, their lives were in darkness, they were, become, were acting immoral and ignorant. But now, in Christ, they were in the light. And that light should be illuminating everything around them and within them. Verse 9. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. 
The fruit of, light, of this light can also be seen again in Galatians. Later, after we miss, list those fruits of evil, are the fruits of the Spirit, which are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and goodness. And then in verse 10, it says, And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Again, I am a fan of Romans. You'll probably realize that as I go on. Chapter 12, verse 2. If you put your finger in there, because we'll go back there one more time before we're done in chapter, Romans chapter 12. But chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Do not be conformed to the world, but be transferred by, transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God. This is this discerning or testing. is kind of like metals, when they are testing metals. It's that same idea of testing, finding out, discerning. And we are to examine how we are to live in a manner that is holy and acceptable, and to find out what that gold standard is, it's in here. That is what we need to spend our time in. Verse 11, back to Ephesians. Keep your finger in that Romans passage, though. Verse 11, Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Do not become involved with evildoers. Literally stop having fellowship with them in their actions because it's poisonous, it's bitter, for it bears sinful fruit that is no good, that is useless and has no benefit. Participating in darkness not only hurts fellow Christians, but it also brings harm to non-believers. When we claim to have the light, but we lie, we defraud others, we abuse others, or live promiscuously, we alienate and confuse the non-Christians. We are called hypocrites, and people look elsewhere for the truth. They look for self-help programs or plans, mystical programs, multiple religions that lead them further and further into the darkness. Do not get involved, but expose. Christians gain nothing from fruitless deeds of darkness, and Christians can expose the evil deeds by walking in the light. So expose, like the lighthouse, both it lights up and reveals the perilous rocks and warns the ships away from danger and also guides them into a safe area. And the main, pur main purpose of all of it is for protection. Verse 12, For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret, Evildoers' works are totally shameful. Indulging in lurid details of evil is absolute darkness. In the end of chapter 1 of Romans, it lists a, all the evils. And there's quite a list there. And at the very last verse, it says, and those people were cheering on the people who were creating or doing those evil things. Cheering them on. It almost sounds like it's what's going on today. Deeds of light distinguish the deeds of darkness, making it impossible to evaluate sinful actions against what's right. So there's no repentance and there's no forgiveness. Verse 13, But when anything is exposed by light, it becomes visible. Light shows the true character of works. As Christians, we need to see evil as evil. Even in our modern world, the connections and dangers are, are, are no less acute. It would be a mistake to dismiss the warnings, the inapplicable to our own nature, what is being told here. Though we no longer seem to worship Artemis or gods or goddesses in equally addicted, but we are equally addicted to the sexual immorality. We've idolized the body with its desires. We've idolized the lust that people have. We've idolized the greed, the contentiousness, the covetousness. Paul's contention that even the act of speaking such things had the potential to weaken the Ephesians' faith in the one true God and draw them back into the foul relationship of demons. For there is far more at stake here than morality not merely a matter of behavior, but of closeness to a holy God. 
God's holiness burns up anything that is not holy. Uncleanness separates people from God. Such Old Testament language has not been made void by the obsolescence of the temple, but the gospel has brought it to its final and true goal in Christ. Christ is the one who washes us clean, makes us holy, declares us righteous by his holy and precious blood. Truly a fulfillment of what the temple was supposed to do. That we might be with God to enjoy, to endure his holy presence without fear by standing within the enveloping arms of Jesus. As Christians, we must realize evil does, deeds are detrimental not only to us, but to other believers. And in 1 John chapter 5, verses 5-7, through 7, it says, This is the message that we have heard from him and announced to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. Fellowship with him, and yet walk in the darkness. We, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all on sin. There is no neutrality in any of this. There is a spiritual warfare going on. Even at the end of Ephesians, it says, put on the armor. Engaging in evil deeds involves a thorough denial of what God has done. We were dead in trespasses and sins. We were shrouded in the darkness of godlessness, hopelessness, fleshliness, idolatry, and, yes, slavery to the devil. You serve someone. You are not a neutral force out there. You either serve God or serve the devil. But now we've been transformed into light, the light of Christ reborn in us. Verse 14, it says, for anything that comes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The enlightenment of Christ in our lives refused to be conformed to the evil behavior. Now, ha, Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. I have a little story here. A little boy went to church with his mother on a sunny Sunday morning. He was enthusiastic about the colorful glass patterns he saw on the floor that traced the stained glass windows from the sun outside. He excitedly asked his mother what this was and what this all meant, and she whispered, Well, that is such and such a saint. And that is another saint. Sometime afterward, in a Sunday school class, the teacher asked if anybody knew what a saint was. The excited little boy raised his hand and said, I do, I do! A saint is someone the light shines through. So let the light penetrate into the darkness of each life. And it's time to wake up. It's time to live in the glorious rays of God's Son, to let His light shine. And I don't know about you, but I was tapping my toe to that piece of music. Were they? So go ahead. I want to just... I think you know this one. This little light of mine I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine. 
I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And remember, that's the light that is within you. It's not yours. You don't generate it. It's something that God gives to you, and now you give to others. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, your message, your truth that dispels the darkness, that attracts the light. Help us to be attractive. Help that light that is within us, that you have given to us, that you radiate through us, that you energize within us to shine, to shine, to shine. And may our actions, may our words, May anything that we do not detract from that or confuse those around us, but it may give the joy and the peace that the world is claiming and clinging and calling for. In the name of the God who has made you, the Son who saved you, and the Holy Spirit that makes it all real. Amen. If you turn to hymn 636, and please stand. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Benediction is from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, 
that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the height, length, the height, the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below.